All right, everyone, today we've got a big guest, Max. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us, man. We're going to dive straight into it because, as, as Tom knows, I don't like to mess about with uh, long introductions. So thanks for joining us. We're super interested to hear about your entrepreneurial journey. So do you want to just kick it off by giving us a brief intro, in, intro into who you are and how you got started in, in the world of business? And Yeah, uh, yeah. So, well, uh, thanks for having me. Um, so my name is Max. I, uh, I come from Canada. I've uh, been living abroad for a couple of years now. But uh, yeah, when I was uh, studying in Canada, I was like, I think 19 or 20 years old, I was studying mechanical engineering. And I think I always had this drive to like, break free and get, get financial freedom. And so that I could um, do whatever I want with my time and not have to worry about like working a job or anything like that. So I was really passionate. I was really passionate about fitness since I was 15, I started working out really early. And I got, to, I was lucky to have a really good coach that kind of taught me like a very different way to work out at the time. It was uh, uh, functional fitness, like kind of like in, in, cause I come from Quebec. So Quebec is a little bit, uh, I it was it's because it's uh, mainly French, so it was a little bit behind uh, the times of fitness. So he was uh, one of the first to like kind of introduce it, like circuit high intensity training. And so back then, you know, with all the whole the old school gyms uh, in Quebec, it's it's not something that people were doing a lot so a lot of. So um, I felt like I knew I got really good at, at, at working out, and and I got uh, really passionate about it. So um, then I, I came across this book, Tim Ferriss Four Hour Work Week. I don't know if you guys. Uh, uh, know about the book, but um, after reading the book, I was like, "Wow, this is great! Like, I'm gonna, you know, build an info product business, right?" And so I started. I I remember like locking myself in my room and I wrote a book about like building muscle, um, like how to build muscle, and it was like all in French. And uh, I launched that after like a couple months, and it did like terribly, terribly bad. Um, the first year, I, I think I made like 700 bucks in sales, something like that, right? So I was like, I was kind of like, uh, I had taken like a whole semester off uh, from college. So that, after that, I decided to go back, but I didn't give up. I just kept learning about how to, to build an information product business from like a lot of the, the gurus like Ryan Dice and everything and all these guys. Um, and after a year, I relaunched, but I took a completely different angle, um, uh, talking more about weight loss um, and specifically how to lose belly fat. Um, and taking that different angle, the business uh, started to take off. So I remember I, I worked on the course uh, for like two months. And then after two months, I I was, uh, I was started doing Facebook ads. So that was like 2014. I was like 20 years old. Um, I think maybe 19, like super young, right? Like like a kid. I looked like a kid on my photos. Uh, but it didn't matter. So, <laughs> so but yeah. Yeah. I'm ready, so I'm the first, um, it was crazy because the first... Hundred dollars, I think was, I spent. I was I set it up with a friend on, on Facebook ads. The first hundred dollars I spent, I made five hundred bucks in sales from the funnel. And I was like, I remember seeing that, and I was like, what the fuck? And I was like running around, I was so happy, like. Um, and so that first year, I think like two thousand fourteen, I think I made about like seven thousand sales. And then the year after that, I made like seventy thousand. And then a the year after that, I made one hundred seventy thousand. And then the year after that, I made half a million. Uh, in sales from that info product that was all from a funnel that I built basically I was just like kept pumping more and more and more traffic in that funnel basically um, and that was working through a lot of like Facebook ad because I was in fitness I was in weight loss right so like I um, you know there was like a lot of like it was kind of like always treading that line of like uh, uh, you know breaking the Facebook rules like making claims like so I think I got around like three or four, uh, four Facebook ad accounts shut down, but um, I would always kind of pick myself back up and, and kind of get back at it. I remember one of the most, January was always the craziest month. The most cr the insane month that I had was like, I think it was like um, January, like that last January that I did. Um, I remember I, I was spending like 80 grand in like one month uh, on Facebook ads. And I think the highest sales was like 110 or 120,000, like in one month. Wow. I remember one month was like, I, I, I crossed over 10 grand in sales from that funnel. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I had like, um, I had like an eye surgery or That's something crazy. like at that time. So I was off. I couldn't like, like, uh, I, I had to like leave it for like a week or something. Um, and so like the, the, the ads went crazy, yeah. You couldn't see no, your yeah. No, no, so actually the ad spend went out of control a little bit and 
that month should have I probably should have spent like twenty thousand less or something, and it's just some like I caught like a few uh, few things a bit too late, and it went a little bit crazy, and my my margin kind of like compressed. But yeah, it was it was crazy, man. Like it's just like spending yeah. like three thousand dollars a day on Facebook ads was that uh, was quite nuts. Um, uh, yeah. So so what was that the same? Was it the same product? The whole was it the same book? For no, years? no, because same, basically same like that um, that first attempt at making one book, I had. I had the wrong product and it was, it, so it was, it was basically targeting the wrong kind of angle. And, but what I really needed was a, a funnel with multiple offers. So basically what I did is I created kind of this core offer it was a 90 program and I sold that for a hundred dollars. Um, and so it was like a 90 day of fitness program. You had the nutrition program and you had like, I think a little bit of coaching or something like that, like very basic coaching. And I learned this technique from Ryan Dice of like splintering off and creating kind of this value ladder. So I, from that 90 day program, I created uh, what he called a tripwire. So I, I kind of like splintered off a week um, of the program. And then I created like a seven day workout program with like a catchy name. Um, and then I sold that for $7. And so that was a client acquisition offer. So basically that was a very low uh, barrier to entry, um, very high value offer. Um, had like a lot of like raving testimonials and all that stuff. So it's a very attractive offer for $7. And the only purpose wasn't to make money, was to, to convert leads into customers. And so once the people are, are converted to customers, their conversion rate is so much higher. Um, so instead of like sending people to my directly to my $100 page, my, my $100 offer, core offer page, um, I would send them, and maybe that would get me like 0.5 or 1% conversion rate, right? But instead I would send them to my, um, uh, my, my tripwire, so my $7 offer, and it may have got like a five, 10% conversion rate on that instead. And then to the upsell, maybe like 20, 30, 40% of people would upsell to the core offer. So it was like the numbers were, were quite different and it worked a lot better. Um, and then I had like a, a higher upsell, which was kind of like a, uh, a, a bigger package. Um, it was like 500 bucks, something like that with like a lot of different kind of uh, things that got them the result faster with less effort, like supplements, more coaching, uh, things like that. So, uh, so yeah, that was, um, uh, so that was my first business. I remember mm -hmm. like, that's what got me to move to Thailand basically. Um, and, uh, after a few years, I think my, my Facebook ads, uh, started, uh, started plateauing and I started feeling like I didn't really know where to take it next. Um, and I kind of felt like I had, capped out a little bit the market and I had like you know because Quebec isn't that big right like um, uh, Quebec is like maybe addressable market like maybe two million three million I mean that's a lot of people but when you're talking about like doing Facebook ads at a high volume and doing millions and millions of impressions you know people starting people start to see the ads a lot I start to worry that the ads weren't working as well so I was already expecting to like a anywhere in the world uh, it, any any person in the world that spoke French was my target market basically? Um, so I would like get. Ah, so it was, it was still all in French then. Uh, no, I tried actually. I translated to four languages. So I translated to uh, Spanish, um, English, German, and Portuguese for Brazil. Um, and English didn't work at all. I think I. It was just. I think that spoke to the level of competition in terms of like how sophisticated and how. The, mar the market is like, it's just, mm. I had to be at such a higher level to be successful in uh, just because of like how yeah. many offers people are getting pitched there. Like, um, you know, I, I would have needed to be like super jacked on steroids with like a crazy, like a crazy magic. Like, yeah, you yeah, some, some, something, some something insane, right? Man. Spanish did pretty good actually, because I think again, like um, my offer was still very novel for a lot of people in, in Spanish. So it, it did pretty well. You know, maybe like thirty percent of what French did, and then um, uh, German Portuguese didn't really work so well. And I think it, maybe that's because I, I don't know exactly. I think it was kind of like one of those things that I tried towards uh, um, maybe like a, on the third or fourth year or something like that, and and uh, either not pushing it hard enough yeah. or the execution wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't the the best execution in terms of like having a sales video like with a voiceover and. There was maybe like a, a a couple like points of failure that maybe could have like caused it not to, but yeah, I think I, I kind of yeah. It's really interesting to like um, I was, I was only going to say it's really interesting that there's we always look at obviously because we're English first language, even though 
you know, I live in Spain myself now, but you still kind of think about, we look at the US as like, that's where we all want to sell. That's where we all want to crack because it's the biggest market. But obviously, of course, like the French speaking world, the Spanish speaking world, there's so many other huge markets and you can grow, you can grow massive businesses. But I think, and also I think people, if they start in the US as well, what we have seen a bit is like, they'll then move that and expect, say on Amazon, for example, they'll move on to say, German Amazon or the, even the UK Amazon or, or France or Spain or Italy. And they're just way ahead of, of everyone else in terms of like the quality of their creative. So kind of doing it in. Yeah. In reverse yeah. I mean, it's a much higher potential, uh, but there's a much higher standard because there's much higher competition as well. So um, for the offer to stand out and be perceived as higher value, what's already available. I think it, it does require like that extra, uh, extra level. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm. so, so Max, this, so this was the first business that you went on to sell then. So do you want to tell us a little bit about, I guess you were going to get to that, but is, is that where it naturally went once you phased out? Did you then look yeah, to sell Yeah, after the I kind of capped, you know, at around half a million a year, I think I couldn't really, I wasn't really sure where to go next. I think that I probably would have had to change that business model fundamentally, like maybe, I don't know, start like turn it into more of a publishing kind of company where like I would have uh hire trainers maybe in different locales and then and then kind of like help them build their funnels and uh, or something like that i think I, but at that point i think i just like got a little bit too stressed out i was a little bit too like too much going on for me with the ads i'm not such an analytical like numbers guy so for me to be managing like and spending a lot of time in facebook ads that for it i i think it was just for me time i think i decided to 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 sell it like at the at the beginning of that year and it was quite a process because at first, uh, since it was in French, uh, I couldn't sell it on Empire Flippers or any of those platforms uh, because for them it was like a foreign business, basically. So, um, so yeah, mm -hmm. I, I actually ended up listing it on a website that was just a general like business uh, for sale classified ads in Quebec, um, and I ended up like selling it as uh, you know just me my, myself like interacting directly with. So, uh, so I basically did the job that Empire Flippers or like another broker would do. So I, did, I, I was my own broker, basically. Um, that was quite a process. Uh, basically, I had to learn to like broker a business and talk to a lot of people who were like just kind of fishing around for information and other people that were more serious and other people like pulling out the last minute. So the process took about like six months until I found like a, a buyer that I think signed a letter of intent and it took an additional three months for them to... Uh, get their loan and everything like secure to purchase the business. So yeah, it was quite a stressful, lengthy process. Um, and uh, but yeah, I did it in the end, and um, I was I think I was quite relieved, you know, that um, I I got like a you know a, a good exit out of it, and that kind of like um, got me ready to start thinking about the next thing, you know, uh, which was Amazon MBA. I, I was, I think I was 24 or 25, something like that, you know, living in Thailand. So. <laughs> nice. nice. So, and, and were you, were you already, as, as you were growing that business and getting it to that kind of level of profit, were you just, were you really investing a lot of the money or were you just living really well and kind of saving? Yeah, I, you know, actually I could have done a much or... better job at that looking back. I think I was just like, you know, the young, young and dumb a little bit. Um, I, you know, when I looked at the business, uh, you know, the, the numbers of the business, I think cumulative, it did about a million in sales or something like that before it was sold, um, give or take, you know, um, and out of that probably spent like close to half a, half a million on ads. Um, so already there, you know, you had a, um, a, quite a good chunk uh, taken out and then some info products. So, you know, digital info products. So there, the, there's no cost of goods or um or anything like that but then there was also refunds as well so you know that that was a business where i gave out a lot of refunds my policy was generally if somebody asked i gave it to them um so i think it was about like 10 15 percent refunds so probably made over those years maybe like you know i don't know like two three hundred k or or I, I don't remember exactly the numbers i don't think i was keep, keeping like an, a, a a very good track of the numbers obviously it was a business lots of expenses you know like this this one time i built an app but you, but you I made mean, some yeah, good for, money, for right? a twenty like, year old like <laughs> like that that's that's still yeah. still a, yeah a that was that was pretty cash. good yeah. And, yeah. yeah so then so then go for so, it so so how so how let, let, let's move into Amazon then so you've exited this info business 
how how did you then move into Amazon? Um, yeah. So basically, as I was building that business, I had this friend um, who had gone to Amazon, I think in 2016 or something like that. And uh, I remember, uh, you know, we 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 got we got really good friends. And actually, um, uh, he's here in South Africa um, now. And, and uh, yeah, we hung out. Uh, but yeah, I've known him for like a long time. And and back then, I remember we we, we lived together. Like we we had this penthouse once in uh, in Medellin and. I'd be like going to the office and, and work my ass off like on, on this uh, this business and he he like I I get back and he he would get the the new like Red Dead Redemption and spend three days like beating the the game on the PlayStation <laughs> and I was like I, I, it got me thinking like and and he was doing better than me you know with his Amazon business um, so I don't know it just kind of like made me feel like it's not that I wanted to have a business where I didn't have to do anything but it was like. It just kind of made me really interested in, in in the business where I could focus on building products and a lot of the systems were automated. So I think that's what really piqued my initial interest in Amazon FBA. Um, so already like before when I was selling the business like that last year, I was already looking to start uh, into Amazon FBA. And since I had a really good knowledge already of direct response marketing, but also I was working with a supplement manufacturer uh, in the U.S. that I thought was a really great uh, manufacturer, like a really good contact. I had gotten from a course, actually, um, that I, I felt like I could just um, work with them because they had a huge catalog of, all, I think, like maybe 300 different products. So I, I just felt like it was a little hanging proof for me to um, start working a supplement with them and then launch out on Amazon. Um, so that's kind of like what I did, and that's kind of like how I transitioned um, into Amazon. Yeah. Do you mean you were you you had a supplement contact because were you yeah exactly setting that exactly, in your yeah. funnel for your other products yeah mm. yeah ah, nice okay Very cool. it sounds like you were basically Alex Hormozy before Alex Hormozy you could have you could have been a you could have been gym <laughs> launch you know a hundred million dollar business yeah yeah I mean uh, yeah Alex is such a beast I, I <laughs> yeah maybe a, a mini uh, a mini Alex Hormozy but <laughs> you one you you've got you've got a few yeah. years yet to get there. So, so, so what, so walk us through then your, so you transitioned in, into selling supplements first. What, so what, what year was this? Because nowadays supplements is super cutthroat, right? It's one of the most competitive niches that you can try and sell on an Amazon. So what, what year was this and, and what did that look like with your first products and, and growing that? Yeah. That so brand? the first brand that I created was an eye health brand. Um, because I had like some, some issues with my eye at the time and, and I actually had a surgery for it and I wanted to like get something that would kind of support like uh, my, you know, best like health recovery and stuff like that. So I looked into um, a, a supplement actually for like a pretty specific like thing. It wasn't just like an eye supplement. It was like a pretty specific um, uh, kind of like uh, thing about the eye. So I was like, um, I, I started a brand that was my first product and that was like mid 2018. Um, when I launched that first product, that was like my, I think I, I remember like ordering like, 60 units or something like super small like i was just like literally i just starting to feel things out a little bit just like putting a product you know i didn't know much about how to sell on amazon i just like listed that product and um over the course of um the next like six months to a year i added three products that that i helped brand but it still remained quite small um i think it was making maybe combined like maybe like a, close to 10k a month or something in sales so it didn't really, that brand was, was kind of like a, um, yeah, my first, my first attempt at selling on Amazon, like a, like a small niche brand, but I think I, I didn't really know how to launch the products on Amazon and, and how to get them to rank and, um, how to make really good listings and stuff like that. So, um, I think that kind of flattened out like, a, at that level, but six months, uh, into less than six months into 2019, I was experimenting with a lot of different products and a lot of different categories. Um, and I, I launched, uh, another supplement, which was, uh, in ear health, um, for another, something specific about the, the, uh, about ear health. Um, and, um, and that supplement actually ended up, uh, uh, doing much better. So I think I, I had a, a, a much better, uh, niche with less competition, higher demand, and I positioned a really solid brand and yeah, a really good branding, really good positioning of the product. And that shot up like to, I think, 20, 30K a month, uh, that first product uh, right from the get-go. Um, and did really well for about a year, then started getting hit with some 
uh, some bad reviews after a year, so getting issues with that. And I think it was a little bit like, you know, I was ranking top three for that niche, and I don't know what was going on, but um, it, it kind of like the sales kind of took a hit a little bit. Um, and yeah, true. So those were like some uh, for 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 within that first year. Uh, those were those were mainly. I also worked on other products as well, but those were the ones that uh, that did the the the, the, uh, the best. Yeah, in the first year. And were you paying yourself? I assume you were you just reinvesting into new products in this business, or were you were you putting money out because you were kind of? I guess you were comfortable. Yeah, actually, that's uh, <laughs> that's kind of like another mistake that I did is um, I was actually taking money out. So when I sold my business, I didn't pay myself out um the amount i kind of kept it in the so i had this this business entity that i formed um i think in like 2015 or something like that so when i sold i sold all the assets of the business and the the money was left in the entity and i was just like i was kind of like pretty gun hole i was like i'm just gonna reinvest everything i'm gonna like you know grow that a lot more onto amazon and i would just pay myself every month you know um a certain amount uh, but yeah, at that point, like that first year, I was still taking a, a pretty good amount every month. And that was a mistake looking back because um, I would have had a lot more um, to reinvest and be more aggressive um, uh, with more products. But yeah, I think um, uh, yeah, looking back, I, I, I think it's better not to, take, uh, not to take that much money out of a business. Um, but yeah, I guess <laughs> my, yeah, my financials. I, I think that's I think that's that's one of the things though with a, a lot of people don't really realize is like if you do want to have that like hyper growth with with an Amazon business um if you can if you can keep the money in the business keep all of the profits in the business that that's going to really help with that and I think that's why you know having uh, you know e even people that are looking to quit their jobs or whatever I know every that's every everybody's dream obviously but the the longer you can you know you can not have to rely on the Amazon income, the faster you can, you can grow it. Um, which, you know, obviously some people do just want to make money from, you know, a few Amazon products and pay themselves a nice salary. And, and that's great. But I think especially if you're looking for that exit at the end, then it can, it can really, really help with your growth. So, so, so moving on then, so you've had these couple of, so eventually you went on to also sell this Amazon business, right? So was, was that just the, the air supplements part was it was it everything together so what did yeah that so like? by then i i think i had i had made a uh, in that first year of selling on amazon i kind of like branched out in a lot of uh different directions because I'm, I'm a pretty creative guy and i'm a little bit squirrely sometimes you know so like i like you know i kind of like go into a lot of different directions um <laughs> and so i made some attempts uh into different physical products but ended up um th there was actually one uh this one skincare uh, brand that I ended up uh, uh, starting that did pretty well, but then again, I was it was like they were electronics, so I was having some issues with high returns and also uh, some negative reviews, some QC problems, and I don't think I had the patience to really deal with that. I, I was I think I was too spoiled with having a U.S. manufacturer uh, for supplements and and just uh, not having to deal with any uh, any sourcing issues um, uh, in China, so I. I just doubled down basically on the, on the supplements. And so I ended up, uh, after those first two niche supplement brands, um, I ended up uh, wanting to do a third supplement brand. I was more generic. Um, and actually that brand, I, I break down on my, on my channel. Um, uh, it's called Pure Medics. And um, uh, what I ended up doing with that brand was just launching a lot of, um, yeah, kind of like generic formulas, you know? So I wasn't going into like, Vitamin C or probiotics are these big niches, but like I would have like a LT and E supplement, or I would have like, and I ended up. Um, my thought was like, the supplement, uh, my niche supplements are really profitable. Like it, it's it's really great margins, you know. My ear health supplement I think it was like fifty percent margin or something like that, you know. Um, and and yeah, um, and um, so I was like, but the problem is I can't scale them because. I felt like I was addressing like kind of like a micro problem, like a very specific problem. And I was doing really well for that keyword. Um, but then there wasn't really a way for me to like expand with other supplements because it's just like one health problem, one supplement. And, and, you know, that was kind of it. Right. So I was like, well, you know, I have this amazing supplier that has like really high quality products with low MOQs and has a high variety of products. 
why don't I just create like a really premium medical branding and you know I, I kind of like scale up then that way I, I won't you know I won't have those scaling issues but I think what I my approach wasn't the best so I think I wasn't uh, launching the products properly and I wasn't focusing enough on one product at a time I basically my my approach was more like just take a bunch of shit like throw it at the wall and like see what sticks right um, so I would like I would order like 20 products at a time or something like that. I would create like 20 listings at a time and just test all these different things. And basically like I had, actually I had some success in the beginning with uh, one product was called NAC and that product, um, I think like, I forgot exactly, but that one product ended up uh, getting around like five, 10 km or something like that was like, and, but the problem is that that product was um, uh, a COVID product, you know, and, and it was so random, but like ended up being the thing that people took for COVID. And um, after like, I think about a year or something, um, uh, it got banned from Amazon. So that was like my best product. It ended up being like this thing with this brand where I had about $80,000 or something of stock and it, it wasn't really profitable. And it was just, it became this big thing for me where I was like, pushing it really hard. It wasn't working as well as my other brands. And so what I decided was I'm going to split this off in two. I'm going to like sell these like two brands. that are just like kind of sleeping there, like making money. Um, I'm going to package them into one account and I'm going to move my, my, my generic supplement brand to like another account. And then I'll give this a better, more solid try, you know, with just more money in the bank, like more, you know, more muscle. And, and you know, <laughs> it's like, so very, very, um, yeah, I just I just didn't want to give up on that brand. So, um, so yeah, I, I the, the two brands that I sold were these uh, these two new supplement brands, and, and so that those are the ones that I sold in 2021. I think it was September or something. So about a year and a half ago. Oh, nice. So it wasn't yeah, n not not too long ago then. So w w was that this obviously because you don't have the limitation of it being in French this time. How did you sell those and what? Yeah, I sold like? those on uh, Empire Flippers. Um, so then they, that this time, <laughs> I guess they took they, they accepted me this time, and uh, the process was pretty smooth. I mean, it was a little bit frustrating at the beginning because um, I remember I had this like really uh, really solid buyer. Um, uh, actually, it was like early days of aggregator, so that was an aggregator, and uh, we they were like, "Yeah, we'll give you your asking price, no problem." Um, and, um, and that was uh, an exciting amount of money for me. So I remember we were like back and forth for like two months and then the last minute they decided to pull out because I don't know, somehow they decided it was too risky for them or, or whatever. So, um, I think they, they were still figuring out, you know, like the basics of like their model, like what kind of brands they were willing to take on with other brands. And so, so yeah, um, that was like a little bit frustrating because the listing was taken out for two months. So it was kind of felt like a two months like waste of time. Um, but uh, after that, it was, I think I, I was more, since it was a fairly small uh, business, I was talking mostly to uh, individual buyers or yeah, I think like maybe small aggregators as well here and there, but mostly like individual buyers or like, you know, small, small teams, small operations. Um, yeah, it took about like, I think six, seven months before um, uh, I I got the, the buyer. Um, uh, we got connected with their power flippers, and then the, the sale went through. Took about a month. It was pretty straightforward, to be honest. Um, and yeah, it was. Is is that how it works, Max? So if someone comes in, if you go to sell your business, and they is it they give you a letter of intent, you agree to take it off. Of Empire Flippers, like the list, the, the listing. Being um, out, well, it's kind of actually with Empire Flippers, it's a little bit more streamlined. I don't even know if they have to send a letter of intent, but it's basically that you go from available or something on Empire Flippers to what's called pending. And so pending is like somebody's put down. I think it's a deposit, I, some something like that. I'm not sure exactly. Um, I think they some some right. somehow I think they put down a deposit or something that kind of says like we're we're entering due diligence. We're gonna do our due diligence, and then if I didn't have a due diligence, we're we haven't found anything, uh, then we're gonna go and proceed with it. And what what kind of multiple in the end? Then did you did did you did you set the multiple that you wanted to go for, or did Empire Flippers kind of guide you? Yeah, I think um, uh, for me that was like a big a big disappointment. I would say with the multiple because I started pretty high. I think at at first. Uh, 
and Park Flippers set it at like 40 or something like that, or 35 or 40. And that's, that was like a, a very exciting amount for me. Um, but I think over the, the course of the few months, I started to realize that my product um, has some, well, going back to what I was telling you about in terms of like getting hit with some bad reviews, I think that the fact, there's kind of like two things that, that got me feeling like, uh, or, or that made me realize that supplements was uh, was a bit of a harder business to, to sell. I'm not talking about all brands, but you know, uh, the brands that I had going on, I think were, were um, a little bit, I don't know. It, it just, I think it, it felt, it, it put off a lot of buyers uh, because maybe they felt like, okay, supplements are already risky and those those brands are maybe a little bit, I don't know. I think it was, I don't know exactly what it was, but um, uh, maybe like some bad reviews on the main product, the fact that it was supplements that kind of like ended up like kind of beating me up a little bit over the, co the course of a couple months. So I kind of steadily decreased the, pr the price. Um, yeah, I think every two months or something, I would decrease the price. Um, and I would get consistent calls, but um, yeah, so I just steadily decreased. And I think I, the the multiple I ended up getting was around 20 or something like that. So it was almost half, uh, maybe like, yeah, 30% to half of what the, uh, what, what the. Uh... So that, that's, uh, just, just Max, sorry, just, just for people that might not understand exactly what that means. That's a 20X multiple. Can you explain how that, how that works because because what we generally work on is like the annual multiple of the the profit or whatever but that's a 20x multiple on yeah so basically the, the 20x um is uh, on a monthly basis so basically what you do is you take your trailing 12 months so trailing meaning like the last 12 months and it changes every month just kind of like it's trailing and um uh, divide that by 12 so that's your average monthly profit over the past 12 months and then you multiply that by 20. so in that case it would be like a year and eight months um it's maybe we started at like three years and then went down to a year and eight months um so yeah it was it was a, a fairly disappointing multiple for this but at that point i think i was ready to let go and move on um yeah and was there was that any kind of earn out at all or were you were you pure kind of um there was actually an earn out i think it was just a fixed amount every month for like six months i think i got most of it maybe and maybe there was like uh, i forgot exactly like maybe 20 or 30 percent i was like okay a set payment every month it wasn't contingent on like any results or anything like that it was just kind of like a consulting fee that kind of the buyer wanted to like uh keep me keep me there so right, right. so he could like book a call or something whenever he wanted yeah yeah, and that, so how do how do you What's feel that? then? I, Reject every time. How do you, how do you? Sorry, Tom, I'm just jumping. How, how do you? How do you <laughs> it's all right. Crap, crap. Joke. He was he was trying yeah. to make a joke. It, every time we interview someone, this happens, or he tries to be funny, and it's uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but, um, so how does that feel then when you have that exit? I mean, obviously you already had the, you already had the first exit, right? But a lot of people watching this, uh, it, because this is something that Tom and I talk about a lot, because we're at the stage now where we're ready to kind of have a win, right? We've been working on our business for, you know, two, three years. We could just keep growing it. But at some point for us as like entrepreneurs, we're really interested in kind of cashing in chips, you know, and, and, and getting like a life changing amount, amount of money. So how did you feel when it went? Um, through? Well, you know, I think you have to get into account, like, I'm sure there's like slight variations of the feeling with the amount, you know, like, um, there must be a difference between like getting like 100 million and like a million and like 10,000, you know, like, <laughs> there's like, there's like a, a big difference between like the number, I think for me, it was, it was, it was like a satisfying amount of money, but it wasn't something where I could be like, okay, I'm just gonna like go like, uh, sit down on a beach, you know, like, and, and, uh, sip pina, pina coladas, you know, forever. Like <laughs> it was more like, okay, you know, that's like more financial security, like more, a bit more like a, a nice cushion, but it wasn't something where I was like, okay, like nah, I'm retired, you know? Um, so I think for me, um, yeah. of course it's a nice feeling, you know, you got a bunch of money. Like, I think actually it's, it's good and bad because I've seen it in myself and I've seen it with some friends as well that, that, that exited their businesses where you do get a little bit of like that poor person, millionaire, just won the lotto kind of syndrome, you know, like um, you start feeling like you know, <laughs> start making like some, I don't want to say stupid financial decisions, but maybe you get a little like uh, a little loose, you know, um, and I think it's. Yeah. You know, when you're talking about like hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, like some 
it, it actually isn't that much money, you know? So like you can start making like decisions that will, that will kind of put you back to, holy shit, like I, you know, I need to start making money again or like, <laughs> or like, like, oh, wow, where does all, where does all go? Right. So it, it, for me, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, you, the, the thing is, from your point of view, it's not a lot of money. To to a hell of a lot of people, that is a lot of money. And I think that is one of the beauty, beautiful things about Amazon FBA, not to get all cheesy, but with a relatively small amount of money and three to four years of, of time, you can grow something. And then that is a life-changing amount of money. And, and this goes to show that when when you level up the people that you're spending time with and the way that you, you see the business world and the world in general. That's why you now, from your point of view, you're thinking, oh, it's only a six figure exit or whatever. It's, it's not this life changing amount of money, but it is, it is still a, a hell of a lot of money. But your point then is, is, is obviously it's a huge chunk of change. Obviously, yeah, it's not a hundred million, but you've got to be careful with your decisions still after that, because if you're buying bottle service <laughs> at the club every weekend and, you know, spending, you know, expensive trips to Dubai and stuff, that money can soon, Run yeah, through. yeah, I know. Com- I completely agree. Uh, my glass is like fogging up, like kind of hot here. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> we gotta jack up <laughs> the air talk of here. all this money. <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, I think, um, uh, aside from that, I'll say like more money has consistently made me feel more secure, chill, you know, calm. Like, yeah, 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 I'll absolutely. Um, you know, I don't want to like, just, just like focus on the negative aspect where it's like, yeah, you do have to be a little bit careful, you know, and you do have to expect like that more money is going to kind of challenge your, I think each, each level of, of, of financial, uh, like uh, of amount of money will require a corresponding level of financial intelligence and, and diligence in managing that amount of money. And if you don't have it, it's kind of like almost like a thermostat. Like you'll, you'll kind of like recalibrate to where your your level is. Um, so I think there's a, a an important focus that has to be given there. Um, but on the other side, like you know, if if you're able to manage that amount or or whatever amount that you have, I think for me, of course, as a rule, it's been it's been comforting and calming and reassuring that like okay, like if all income stops, I have X amount of years that I can just like chill you know not chill but you know i have time i have a, a, a large runway in front of me um and mm. yeah so hasn't stopped me it has like has done very little and like reducing my drive for like making more and wanting to like get a a, a seven figure exit but uh it's been it's been good for for like overall how i feel every day yeah i because i i think are you, are you then did, did you reinvest it back into the other business then, so the third, the third um, supplement brand that you said you wanted to kind of separate. So is that is that now active still? Yeah. So actually, or that or um, I ended up. So I learned kind of from my my first exit um, that I had not to like leave all the money in the business. So I actually took a, a quite a bit of money out, and then um, I left uh, a bunch in the business. Actually, like I think it was like maybe like. Uh, like a, like less than half, you know, of of what I what I sold for. Like I left to uh, to work on Pure Medics, and I basically just um, uh, kept working on that brand until I realized about a year. Uh, actually, it was like last year. I realized that it was just better to let it go, and um, I liquidated it for a five figure amount. Actually, um, instead of just, I would have let. Honestly, I would have like sunset it. Um, I I would have just let it go for like. But I thought, oh, it's good branding. You know, it's good like. I just remember I just put it on Flippa and I I I got like a little five figure amount for it, um and um. So it's three exits then. <laughs> we we underestimated you. Oh. We, we put that in the thumbnail. Okay. <laughs> the three exit man. Prol- prol- <laughs> prolific exit entrepreneur. Max the exit Roy. <laughs> so, exit King the exit Roy. King. <laughs> yeah. So so Max, we we we've probably got we've probably got just under ten minutes left. So. Your, your story is amazing. And I think it, uh, like we were chatting about at, at the beginning, um, you know, okay, yeah, there, there's people that have 10, you know, eight figure exits, whatever it is. But w- what, I, what I love from, from speaking to you is, is um, I think for a lot of people, yeah, they, they, they want to almost feel something is a, is a little bit more relatable. And I think that's amazing. And that you've done that multiple times and that, you know, you're still, 
you're still in the game. So what is it that you're working on now then? Because I know you've you, you've transitioned into something in the same space, but a little bit little bit different. So what, yeah, what are you working yeah, on? Yeah, so now? actually now I'm, uh, I'm working with a company uh, in Singapore. So it's an Amazon aggregator. Uh, it's called Rainforest. And um, uh, basically, it's like a yeah, an eight-figure aggregator. It's going to be around 50 million, 50, 60 million a year with um, a lot of different brands. And I joined uh, that company as a product development uh, person. So basically, I, I, I help them develop new products. Um, uh, it's on the, on the, on for, for all the different brands. And for me, I thought that was like kind of a, something that would... Uh, be cool to kind of hit two birds in one stone. I had the friend, the very friend who got me into Amazon, um, I think like two or three years ago, his his brands are not doing so well. And, and, you know, it was kind of like taking hits uh, every year. Like maybe a year was like, you know, was like all Chinese hijackers or something like that. Like, and then it was like out of stock, like, you know, not it. So it just started like uh, not working so well for him. So he actually started, uh, he transitioned to being more like of a consultant uh, employee working at, at different companies. And I remember looking at him and, and, and looking at how much money he was making. I was like, well, that's pretty sweet. Um, and kind of like, I, I feel like I've had to battle my whole entrepreneurship career. I've had to battle with being someone who's fairly risk averse, like fairly anxious um, about money and stuff like that. So I've had to kind of battle, like taking huge amounts of risk and, and also, um, uh, having, you know, uh, 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 being quite risk averse. So I think for me, it was like, okay, like I'm going to try, uh, kind of, I, I kind of felt like I wanted to get out of supplements and, and, and try my hand at like developing products and launching products in different niches and kind of like get more experience in general. So that's kind of what I, I, I thought, and that's how I, I, I ended up uh, uh, joining that company. So it's been good because um, I've been uh, launching a lot of different products in different categories and learning a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, so so that's what I've been doing. And now at the same time, I'm also uh, developing a, uh, a new brand that's uh, not in supplements. So it's a new Amazon FBA brand that I'm working on um, in the... It's an anxiety relieving product that uh, I'm, I'm keeping like hush hush now. Uh, might uh, discuss it more in detail in the future, but uh, now it's just, uh, yeah. But so I'm, I'm pretty excited about it now. I'm sourcing, uh, sourcing the product, working on samples. So a bit more complicated, a little bit more difficult um, than um, I expected because it's fully custom. Um, but now I found a new agent actually that's helping me. Uh, getting uh, samples and, and, and on the ground in China. So uh, it's a it's a lot better, a lot easier. Uh, so yeah, I'm hoping to launch this in the next uh, couple of months um, and uh, see where it goes, hoping to build a brand and and then maybe uh, do a third or fourth uh, exit. <laughs> Another exit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you're, it sounds good with, with, uh, with Rainforest. If you're basically able, yeah, if you get anxious about, about spending loads of money on products, you can just have kind of, free swings with someone else's money that's, that's great. absolutely yeah i mean I and i have like so much freedom that it's basically like i feel like almost any idea that i come up with everybody's like so excited about it, you know and then and then we launch it and i get to see the results and uh, yeah so it's pretty cool um i'm i'm hoping to keep working with them uh for 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 a while and and just kind of grow together uh i think yeah I'm, I'm learning a lot and i can now now i'm actually building a team so uh, if there's anyone listening that wants to develop products, uh, I'm actually hiring uh, uh, product developers. So, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm I'm building a team. So I'm learning like a different step step of skills now. I'm gonna be starting to learn like how to manage team and everything. Um, and yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I I enjoy a lot of the challenges that I have there. Awesome. Because I, I think that's one that's one thing. Um, Tom's actually talked about this in in one of his one of one of our YouTube videos is. People often see Amazon as like, okay, I get into selling products on Amazon. If it doesn't go very well, I'm I'm back to you know whatever I was doing before. But you, 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 that's not really true, is it? And you're kind of proof of that of of the skills that you're learning. You know, marketing, sales, product development. It, it there's a ton of skills, and then there's actually opportunities within the Amazon sort of. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? The Amazon ecosystem. S- eco- ecosystem where you can actually, you know, find, cause, cause you're working on a con- consultation basis, right? So you're not, you're, you're not fully back in like the, 
40 hour corporate sort of, you know, what a lot of entrepreneurs in some ways dread, but you're, you're, you're able to, to have a, a nice extra sort of source of income through the skills that you developed. Uh, yeah. Amazon. Yeah. I mean, to be, to be clear, it is a full-time job, but it's also remote. And I also have basically a lot of flexibility in terms of like how I work and uh, when I work. Um, I think the, the, at the level of which I work, most the most important and anybody at the company that I, I work uh, with would recognize that is it's all about results it's all about like what you bring to the table and and what you're able to achieve yeah. it's not so much about like clocking in clocking out at a certain time so um uh, so yeah i think that's uh, that's really cool and and i agree like uh you know i think a lot of people are kind of worried like oh, i want to try this out and like you know it's maybe a waste of time and then you know I'm, I'm back to what i was doing and i you know it's it's it's, I think, um, uh, a lot of people are ask, also asking, like, oh, is Amazon dead in 2023, you know? And, like, uh, is it too late to, to, to turn the game? And the question that I would say to that is, like, well, Amazon is just a sales channel. You know, I think we've, we've, we've all heard that and we, we say it a lot. And it's, it's like, I mean, but sometimes asking a question, like, is e-commerce dead in 2023, right? And then even asking, like, are physical products yeah. dead in 2023, right? And it becomes more and more silly, like as you you get closer to the essence of what we're really doing, which is building physical products and attractive, uh, building attractive physical products and brands, um, and just the, the market is just so humongous and 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 so huge, and and e-commerce is only growing, and Amazon is just the best place to sell. Uh, you know, on, I mean, it's just where most people go to buy stuff online. Um, yeah, and and I I think with there a lot of the recent developments with AI. Um, I think like creating physical products and physical product brands, that's, I think that's one of the industries, obviously AI is going to impact that, but like if I was a copywriter right now or a graphic designer or one of those working in one of those industries that AI is, is, is rapidly going to almost replace, I'd be a little bit worried, but I think physical products, like obviously the AI is going to creep into parts of the development and, you know, branding and stuff like that. But I, I, I still think it's one of the, yeah, one of the industries where it's not going to have a huge, huge neg negative sort of impact on, on, on yeah, people doing it and stuff. So, yeah. So we, we, we're kind of, we're kind of coming up, coming up to, um, coming up to the end of it, but it's been, it's been a great chat, Max. So really appreciate you coming on and, I think we can definitely have have you on again in 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 six months when we've had another five exits. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so you've, do you want to just leave this with where can people find you? Um, I know you're on YouTube, and I've been, I, I've been sort of nagging you to get on Twitter as well because we're big on Twitter. But do you want to just tell us a little bit what you're doing with the YouTube channel and where people can find you if they want to reach out? Yeah, and... yeah. I mean, maybe you'll be able to post a link to my channel below. It's just Max and Roy. Um, at Maxis Rose on YouTube, and um, I'm not on Twitter yet, but uh, maybe I'll, I'll get on Twitter at some point. Uh, but now I'm just uh, I'm just starting be. out on uh, YouTube, so um, if people want to go there and uh, subscribe, that'd be great. You know, I don't have a lot of subscribers right now, so it'd be good to, to have a bit more. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's where I'll, I'll mostly be uh, posting content and stuff. So if people are interested, uh, they can go there, subscribe, and comment, ask questions. You know, make more videos and yeah, all awesome. that good stuff interact and you're also you're also part of honest fba now right you're in you're in the honest fba community so obviously people that are in inside there have, have already been chatting with you and stuff and you've i've seen you've been posting some useful stuff in there already, yeah so, yeah so thanks for that so any last words tom max no. questions no that was great max thanks for coming on mate we're, yeah like i said we'll we'll do it again if thanks you can, guys uh, yeah sweet make it easy and we'll like and awesome. obviously like and subscribe <laughs> like and subscribe